The Sands people are said to have become isolated from everyone else around 100,000 years ago, only to re-enter society some decades later with a more diverse DNA. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here at Just K, where we talk about everything that is health, mind, body, and soul. To all my subscribers, thank you for coming back. It's good to see you again. If you're new here, thank you for joining me, and consider clicking on that subscribe button and the notification bell. What are we talking about? We are talking about the original tribes of Africa today. It is commonly known that our history began in Africa, and this has been proven through unique DNA markers that are said to be shared only by the indigenous tribes of Africa. That being said, many if not all of our pre-Christian era spiritualities come from the tribes of, from these original tribes of Africa. So today I'm going to name a few. Let's get started. The Sands people. They were termed Bushmen by Europeans. They're said to have been in South Africa before the Bantu peoples. They were a hunter-gathering people who followed the seasons. They knew where plants were going to be the most hardy during any particular time of year, where food would grow, how much would grow, and how much to harvest to not harm the environment. These nomadic peoples had paintings on rocks dating back to at least 26,000 years ago. Some tribes are said to have followed the antelope for migration. They believed in a powerful deity with other minor, with other minor ones. They also believed in ancestral worship, and that was like the important part of their spirituality as well as deifying the moon. Agon was a creator deity and a trickster, powerful and sometimes benevolent. The belief is that when the world was first created, there was no distinction between animals or humans. Anna, leader of the spirit of the dead and enemy to Agon, introduced bad things to the earth, causing Agon to send destruction to the world before retreating to the heavens. Anna living in the underworld and ruling the tormented souls of the dead, while Ishe reigns the heavens as an agent of good. The Hatsa people also moved with the seasons. They were believed, they were believed by genealogists to be the primary roots of mankind. Their story is told in four parts, with each part consisting of a different culture. The beginning of time, or the first ancient ones, were very tall and very hairy. They possessed no tools, they slept under the stars, and hunted by chasing game until the animal died. The second group, the in-betweens, were still giant but had less hair as they could now light fires and hunted game using dogs. Animals are said to have become more wary of people at this time. They are said to be the first peoples to use medicine and protection charms, and instead of sleeping under the stars, by now they slept in caves. The third is the recent one. They're now smaller, with bows, arrows, and huts to sleep in. This group of people traded with outsiders. The huts of the people still exist. The fourth, or those of today, offering prayer to the sun, moon, stars, and ancestors. Pygmy tribes, a hunter and gathering tribe as well, native to South Africa, the Congo Basin. They're known for their short stature, and the name pygmy is actually a European word for dwarf. They are considered to be the first inhabitants of the African continent. They have a supreme deity called Komba, who's part of a divine family, who's still distant from the world because he brought death to the world. His spirit, Ezinje, protects humans while ruling over the death and the rebirth. The Berber people. The term Berber is actually Greek for barbarian. They liked to call themselves the Amazon. The Hamasan people of our, I mean, or people of Africa are indigenous to North Africa. There's evidence that they exist at, existed at least since the beginning of recorded history. Some say the Capsians were Berbers prior to the invasions of the Arabs in the seventh century. They had funerary practices as the same they did in Egypt. They did things like painting the dead and sometimes burying them with ostrich eggs and small jewelry and weapons and the bodies were put in the fetal position. They had de deities like Set and Osiris, in which we are familiar with. They also had Neith, who was considered the first and prime creator, the goddess of war, weaving and cosmic faith, wisdom, water, and rivers. 
She basically governs the flow of the universe as it's the way it's run. She's said to be the mother of Sun Ra, also the creator of the Apepi, the serpent or the enemy of Ra. She is one of the four deities associated with protecting the canopic drawers. A few of the other tribes, the Maasai people, they didn't migrate south until the 15th century, but existed for well over 3,000 years prior. The Maasai people are known as warriors, and they make their homes in Tanzania and South Kenya today. The Sandawi people, they still exist in Tanzania today as well, and are considered descendants of the Sands people. Finally, we have the Nomas people. They had a nomadic existing in South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, until they were invaded by and colonized by the Germans. Those are just a few of the beginning tribes of Africa. And in a future video, we're going to explore some of those spiritualities. But first, in the next video, I'd like to discuss some original African kingdoms with you. I love you, thank you for joining me, and until the next video, 